What's going on, YouTube? OCD Free DC here. What I've got for your face balls today, I'm going to do a video uh, that I haven't done for quite some time. And we're going to open up some packages. I happen to have three of these knives right here. Some of you might already know what type of knives these are just by, based on the packages. Let's get into it real quick. Uh, for an unboxing knife, I'm going to use this little guy right here. This is a full blown budget knife from a company called Dispatch. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I'll have a video coming out on this. They sent it over to me to check out. I've been doing some testing with it. And, you know, for a cheap knife, it's not bad. And I've got some uh, stuff to say about it. But, uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and use it just because I've been, like I said, doing some testing with it. Let's see what we got going here. We've got a couple uh, Two Sun knives. Like I said, I have not done any Tucson videos for quite some time. Well, I'm going to take a look at these. These are three new models uh, from Tucson. And let's just get right into it. Uh, by the way, I'll throw a link up in the description if you want to check out this dispatch. I'll also try and throw links up for all three of these guys as well. So if you're interested in any of these, check out the video description. All right, let's just uh, let's get into it. We're going we're gonna to pull this middle one first. I do not remember what the uh, model numbers were on these, but oh, this I actually, I actually do. Uh, this is the TS, uh, what is this thing? 129? I think this is the 129. I'm trying to be careful to cut this tape that's on the side here because this one actually has, uh, it's kind of a churched up version of the 129. Let's see. Okay, get the damn tape off there. So this is not a brand new model. However, uh, this one is a new look. Let me grab a rag. I forgot when we're dealing with the uh, two suns, we need a rag here to wipe off, uh, wipe off all the oils. Okay, let's take a gander. So right off the bat, we've got some beautiful looking carbon fiber, uh, very nicely contoured. Uh, looks very nice. I don't remember this knife having this uh, bit of a cutout right there, so I think that's a little quality of life improvement that they've made also the front flipper looks to be slightly different shape and i also don't remember that it had a swedge on the blade and then we've got some lightning anno going on on the back side which isn't going to show up very well in this lighting i'll front flip it first there we go very nice so beautiful satin grind going on Got this really nice sheep's foot blade. This one happens to be in M390. So there you go. TS129. I'm pretty sure that's the number on this. It's been a while. With lightning anno, carbon fiber. Like I said, a few minor adjustments to this thing. Okay. I'm not mad at it. Very nice and thin behind the edge. Yeah. It's a good knife. The TS-129, this was a great knife when it first came out. Action is great. Uh, and, you know, of course, oop, <laughs> and then I screw it up. Maybe. Let me let me do it left-handed. There we go. You can spidey flick it. Uh, doing that left-handed with the frame lock is easier just because you don't end up putting any pressure on the lock bar. But there you go. TS-129 in a churched up state so that's cool all right now let's get into another one here okay i don't remember i think this is an older model as well now that i'm looking at it all right i'm just going i'm just gonna tear it out that way because i'm not interested in the tape and all the bs okay an older uh, Tucson model, but a really spectacular one. 
This is the TS-81, if I remember correctly. Uh, this one has got carbon fiber inlays that are ribbed for your pleasure. Uh, also, the back of the knife, backspacer, and the spine. A little different milling pattern going on here. Yeah, very cool. All right, let me check out the flipper here. Boom. Let's get the uh, blade wiped off. Okay, the TS-81, this one also in M390. You can see right there. And this thing's just a gorgeous knife. Absolutely. Action is good. Blade is centered. Yeah. You know, I, I've said it a hundred times before, for the quality and the fit and finish on these things, uh, they're pretty incredible. Okay, so we got a TS-129, a TS-81, and now uh, let's see what's in door number three. You can see they've, they've been updating some models with new steels, new inlays. Okay, this one is a new model, or new-ish model, I should say. New to me. Anyway, there's, I'm sure several people out there ha have one of these. Uh, okay. Let me get this tape cut. Here it is with the oil wiped off. Pretty interesting knife. You can see it's got these kind of really interesting carbon fiber inlays that look like they're kind of on the inside. Very well done. The texturing on the scale is very, very smooth. Um, okay, nice backspacer. All right, so we've got the carbon fiber inlay on both sides, even under the pocket clip there. Very cool. Okay, let's flip it and see what we got here. All right. Yeah, pretty interesting blade shape here. Um, yeah, I don't even really know what to call that. Uh, just kind of a modified drop point, I suppose. Uh, I've got a little bit of a forward choil here. My watch is trying to talk to me. I like the uh, jimping up on the spine of the blade. And super comfortable in hand. This, my boy Mazwan Mokhtar design right here. And this one is rocking... Let's see if we can get it to show off. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. M398. M398. So we've got M390 on these other two. Uh, this one in M398. If you guys are not familiar with M398, um, I'll talk about it here in just a moment. But before I do, talk about a few things on this knife. So this knife's rocking uh, good blade centering. Action is fantastic for right out of the box. Uh, yeah, you can definitely thumb flick it open. And the hole is kind of up towards the pivot. Yeah, definitely. It's more of a flipper for me. I'm not saying you can't spidey flick it, but uh, it's the holes. If it, the hole was down here a little bit more, it'd be easier. But... Uh, yeah, you can definitely get it. But one thing that it does have that I really like is an internal relief cut on the lock bar. So that's fantastic. <clears throat> the inlays here are really, really nicely done. That's a pretty good looking knife. You can see this one here has an external relief cut. I'm guessing the 129 does as well. Yes. Let's, let's throw these two off to the side because these two are certainly knives that I've already done a video on. This one right here, I have not. Like I said, I'll throw links up in the description if I can for all of these. But this one right here with this beautiful stone wash uh, finish on the M398, really good looking knife, really comfortable in hand. The jimping, man, it just works really well. I'm really, I'm really kind of digging this thing. Action is great, no lock stick. Absolutely zero blade play. And yeah, no blade play whatsoever. Yeah, let's pull this thing apart real quick and take a look inside. Uh, once I once we do that, I'll also check the factory edges on all three of these. 
But while I'm tearing this apart, I'm going to talk a little bit about the M398 blade steel because it's fairly interesting. Um, <clears throat> so M398 is made by Bowler Udelholm, uh, same company that makes M390. And M398 is, is a pretty interesting steel in the aspect that it achieves pretty incredible uh, edge retention for a relatively softer uh, steel. So they're definitely not reversible clip. Uh, so this thing, you know, good M398 is going to be run up in like the 64 HRC range. Whew, that screw is tight. Okay. Um, and at, uh, at 64 HRC, the, uh, the steel is, you know, as far as edge retention is concerned, it's up with, up there with like 10 V, uh, blade steel, which is pretty impressive. Okay. So that's what I was wanting to see is how these inlays were held in. So that's interesting. So it is just one large carbon fiber inlay. Beautiful. They fit extremely well. The fit and finish there is pretty spectacular. Like I said, uh, these knives are incredibly well made. All right, we're just going to clean this all up real quick. M398 is um, a stainless steel, but has incredible edge retention. Like I said, comparable to something like a, a 10V. Um, it is better edge retention than like S110V, not quite as good as S125. So, you know, we're talking about a really high edge retention stainless steel, uh, but it also has properties that are, uh, it has a lot better corrosion resistance than S125V. Uh, uh, it's, it's pretty impressive all the way around. It's a great steel. It's one drawback is its toughness. I'm just kind of curious here. Let's, uh, we'll see if these screws come out easily. Just kind of curious. Want to check out one of these inlays. M398 has a drawback. It's definitely the toughness. But, you know, for an EDC knife, um, it has pretty incredible uh, corrosion resistance. Not quite as good as M390. Yeah, very cool. So, you can see the the islands on there. So a lot of machining went into this knife with a great design, a lot of machining, tapping and threading, locating all these holes, making sure this inlay fits uh, just perfectly. And it ends up being flush all the way across, uh, which is pretty impressive. Definitely some, uh, some impressive machining going on here. They're kind of flexing, but all right, let me get some, where's it at? Get some slick them all out here and we'll get this thing all squared away. And then we're gonna check the edge retention. So for those that don't know about slick them all, this is a lubricant that I make myself. You can go pick it up on the website, ocdforedc.com. Uh, it is a grease and not an oil, so it stays exactly where you put it. And it doesn't take much at all, but it is a fantastic lubricant and doesn't dry out over time. Lube that I have been exceedingly happy with as time goes on. But I'm just going to go ahead and throw a little bit on here. I hear stories all the time from people telling me that uh, they've used slick them all on different things other than knives, which makes me incredibly happy that people are so pumped with it. It's, uh, you know, guys are using it for their uh, pew pews, things like that. Oop, about to forget my backspacer. All right, I think we should be good to go. I'm going to uh, 
close this for right now. Pivot is way too tight, like normal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. That slick them all life. Ooh. <laughs> it, it's uh, so good that it even, once you get to the the detent ramp it wants to throw the blade open like that <laughs> that's funny yeah <laughs> all right well that's pretty good lubricant i would say uh that thing is uh yeah now it's much much easier to Spidey flick. Wow. Boy, the action on this thing is incredible. Okay. All right. Well, let's check this thing out for a little factory edge here. Real quick, little tips tips and tricks for the slick -em all uh, When you're done using it, go ahead and pull the plunger backwards and suck the grease right out of the applicator. Just like that. And then pop that off, pop this back on. It comes with two different applicators just like this. So this one you can, this one's flexible. You can get into a, a knife without disassembling it. But I generally use the blue one. I just like it better. It's uh, crazy, crazy tiny uh, applicators. So you can get them in just about anywhere. Comes in a nice uh, hollow bag just like this. You can store it in that. Go check it out, ocd3dc.com. Let's do uh, a little sharpness test here. Let's see if uh, Tucson is doing well with their factory edges. So you guys can see that well. So we're going to start with the TS-129. This one is in M390. All right, here we go. Okay. A 110 is a fantastic result. The TS-81, again, in M390. Okay. A 125. Very, very nice. This one could use uh, a little slick em all Action still good, but, you know. Tucson M398 blade steel. Let's see what we're working with here. Holy shit. Okay. All right. We've got an 80 on the M398 from Tucson, which is an incredible, incredible factory edge. Now, uh, the only M398 I have any experience with whatsoever is this knife right here. And this is a, a Spyderco Mule. Uh, and... I will tell you that this one came out of the factory with a pretty significant burr uh, on the edge. Now, I have not sharpened it, but I did strop it a little bit just to remove that burr. And the burr removal was much more difficult than what I was anticipating. Now, I don't know what the HRC is on this particular M398, but I will uh, will be doing some testing with both of these. Now, I'm not under any illusions that Tucson is going to have as good a heat treat as Spyderco. I fully expect this M398 to outperform this one. What I, but I, what I will say is, is that by all accounts, M398 does not look like a hard steel to heat treat. So um, with how thin this thing is behind the edge, I mean, you can see the secondary bevel right there. Just to put that into perspective, I'll show the mule, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully you can see here that the mule is at least twice the thickness behind the edge. 
Uh, and, you know, if this thing even performs like, you know, 80% of well done M398, it's going to be, it's going to be a performer. So, you know, for what these knives cost, um, yeah, pretty, pretty insane value for uh, what you're getting here. This one happens to be designed beautifully. It works extremely well in hand. And the overall look of it, I think, is uh, pretty fantastic as well. So, although M398 certainly can be, um, and probably is, uh, going to be a little chippy, uh, just because of its toughness, you know, for an EDC knife, in my opinion, that's kind of a, not a big price. It's not like I'm going to be out, uh, batoning this thing through logs. You know what I mean? Anyway, there, there you go, guys. There is the newest, uh, two sons that showed up at my house. Hopefully you guys dig that. Like I said, I'll throw links up to these exact models as long as I can find them. Go check out the video description and go to ocdfreedc.com. Pick yourself up some, uh, you know, some slick them all or uh, pick yourself up a glass breaker delete for the Benchmade shootout. Anyway, guys, thanks so much. We'll catch you next time. I'm out of here.